Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. Welcome to the another video on lambdas. In one of the previous videos, we covered how to pass lambdas as function arguments. The next obvious question would be what if I want to return lambdas from the functions. However, as soon as you hear this, you might be having questions like how would you do it and more importantly, when would you do this? Right now, we will concentrate on when or why would you do this, that is returning a lambda from a function. Let's assume that you have a piece of logic, but that piece of logic has a dependency on another piece of logic and you can pretty much replace the piece of logic here with some functions. Let's assume that you want to basically calculate a TDS that is tax deduction at source but that has a dependency on how HRA exemption is calculated but that in turn has a dependency on the residency status of the employee that is whether he is living in a metro or a non-metro. So depending upon the residency status the HRA exemption gets calculated and depending upon the HRA exemption the tax deduction at source gets calculated. So you see there is a dependency on each calculation. It could be as complicated as this or it could be as simple as let's assume that you want to calculate the checkout amount in your application. Well that depends upon the item price including the tax depending upon under which category of the GST that item comes. And not only that, it also depends upon how many items you have purchased of each item. And based on this, the whole checkout amount gets calculated. So of course, there is a dependency from one to another here. And this is exactly the kind of situation where you want to return a lambda from a function. Now having understood when to use this feature, now it is time to get into how to do this. And to do that, let's get into a demo. This is one of the very old piece of code uh, we had written when we were discussing enums. What is it? You have a enum called as coffee cup size and there are various coffee cup sizes, something like mega, large, medium and small. And then we also have a, another class called as order. Order basically contains a count that is how many items that you want to order. Now we want to utilize this to basically write our logic to calculate the total amount someone has to pay when he orders a coffee at a coffee shop. So let's get started. So I have here higher order function demo kt right now it is completely empty. Typically when we order something it is usually a pair of an item and a quantity. So I would be writing something like pair coffee cup size dot say small and then order say 3 and now based on this I want to calculate the price. So let me write a function here function price calculator what it needs is a coffee cup size and what it returns is lambda. It returns a lambda which is order and that returns a float that is what this function is. So you basically have a function that takes some kind of a parameter and then returns a lambda. This is a lambda type. If you have seen in the previous videos about lambdas, you use the lambda type to declare the kind of parameters that you are passing and in the same way you use the same mechanism to decide what kind of lambda a function is returning. So this function is returning a type that takes order as an argument and returns a float. So let's proceed. So when on coffee cup size, it is basically a Kotlin switch case that we are writing. Coffee cup size say small return, I have to return a lambda, order, order dot count multiplied by, let's assume that we are multiplying it by some factor that is 1.0 yeah. and that is in case it is small and we have to basically cover it for all other cases that is small, medium, large and mega. This is what this function is. It basically takes a coffee cup size and returns a lambda. Now you have a pair that contains this information and I can pass this to price calculator. So what I will do is price calculator. I need to pass the coffee cup size. So order dot first that is the 
destructuring that I have used and then it returns me a lambda and then on that I will invoke order dot second and I can basically print this the price is this and if I run this it's going to give me some kind of a value so since it is a small and I am ordering three cups so it would be one into three so that that is why you are getting three however if I make it say mega and I order three and if I run this again it is giving me a, a different value we can make this thing even more complicated let's have orders which are least of coffee cup size pairs and the pound so you can see that this is what orders would look like it is basically list of various coffee cup sizes and how much you are ordering for each coffee cup size and now what i want to do is based on this order i want to basically calculate your total price how would i do this first of all orders dot for each that will give me each pair of coffee cup size and the order on that i am going to invoke price calculator i will use it dot first that is going to take care of the parameter that i need to pass to the function and then i will do invoke it dot second and if i just print this it is just printing me all the calculations for each pair that we have passed but what i want to do is make a sum of this well what i can do is let's remove the print statement let's maintain a sum where sum is equal to zero and then once all this is done what i also want to do is there is a extension function called as also it is basically adding an extra action that you want to do after you do this so what i want to do is sum plus equals to it yeah i think the problem is this needs to be a float type that will take care of it and then print ln sum total is sum and if i run this it is going to give me the total and what you can even do is you can basically put this whole thing refactor it into a function and uh, let's call that particular function as get total order cost and that's it so get total order cost and it prints and if you don't want to do that you can return the sum make it float and then print ln the cost of order is get total cost order orders that's it and everything is taken care and if i run this it does exactly the same so here in this video we used quite a lot of things we used a function that returns a lambda and also we used some of the things that we had learned in our earlier videos on lambda that is lambda destructuring using it first and it second and then used the for each with the trailing lambda syntax and then what we also used the also extension function and with this uh, we have pretty much covered everything that we need to cover as far as lambdas in kotlin is concerned in the next video we will move on to something else so that's it that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye